Hello, everyone. This is Chala Dinkoy, CEO and founder of The Repositioning Expert. I'm here with another edition of my podcast, Naked Marketing. I have here today as my guest, Nathan Zadwarney. Welcome, Nathan. Hey, Chala, how are you? It's good to, it's good to have you. What am I saying? Thank you for having me here. <laughs> it's okay. Do you have a podcast <laughs> or something? It sounds like you do. No, no, I don't. No, I don't. Um, don't worry about it. I just got <laughs> So all good. No, for sure, for sure. Uh, so it's great to meet you. What part of the country are you in? I'm in Victoria, British Columbia. So West You're Coast. Kidding. Oh, yeah, wow. West Coast of Canada. Well, I mean, I only usually talk to Americans all day, every day, because I, I mean, I'm in Toronto, but mm -hmm. all day, every day I talk to Americans. This is a pleasure. I'm glad we well, connected. How's it going, eh? Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I know. Mm. Fellow Canuck. So tell us what you do, Nathan. Who do you help? I basically, gosh, how can I boil it down? So uh, if you want the tagline, it's kind of like I help coaches and experts sell their offers without sales calls or webinars or crazy 47 part funnels or hiring uh -huh. massive sales teams or, you know, whatever it is. So um, basically that's it. Helping people create uh, income without sales calls and helping people turn single sales into long-term Customers. I love it. So of course, I, I, of course I have to ask now, how do you do that? That would be the next huh. one. Right? Well, it would, wouldn't it? Yeah. So at the risk of sounding like an infomercial, <laughs> um, I find that um, a lot of people try to sell their service or their product or their thing, whatever that thing is. A lot of times people uh, try to pack the whole sales process into like one event, you know, like a 60 minute call or a 90 minute webinar or whatever it might be. And a lot of times they, uh, they end up basically churning and burning, overcoming objections, um, teaching or convincing, educating, whatever it might be. Um, when they really haven't kind of overcome some of the, some of the steps or dealt with some of the steps, um, that could very easily be done before the sales call even happens. And uh, so what I do is I help people do a couple of different things. Uh, first step is that we need to find out exactly the offer that's going to help the, their ideal client solve their biggest problem right now. Instead of um, making such a huge promise out the outset, I like to help people focus on um, making a smaller but significant problem pro um, promise that's going to help their client um, right away, make an impact right away, build that trust right away, and then they can move on to, you know, something maybe a little bit larger down the road. Um, second thing that I do is I help people really embrace the idea of pre-selling or marketing, whatever. I, some people call it mar uh, marketing. I like to call it pre-selling <clears throat> so that not only the no like and trust factor can be built, but so that you can also uh, do some of that education and a lot of that uh, objection handling before the sales conversation even happens. And then the last thing, once those things are happening is that uh, we do like what I call a simple three-step invite um, to get people uh, asking questions and answering questions, three, four, five questions on chat. And then people get uh, people can send them the client they're offering a Google Doc, and usually at, at that point they're already more or less eighty five percent sold. So it's very easy for people to say either I'm in or I'm out, and there's no hassling, there's no chasing, there's no um, stress, all of that sort of thing. So um, yeah, it respects people's timing, and it makes the sales process a lot easier and a lot less stressful for both for both parties. I've got a little cat around here. She may. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. She may want to join the conversation. That's okay. I like, I Perfect. love, we love it when anybody in the household joins us. So okay, <laughs> we're fine with that. We're great with that. So um, let me uh, tell you about, um, you know, this podcast It's all about getting naked with your marketing, which is like showing us the underbelly of what has not worked for you. So I'm dying yeah. to know what has not worked for you. Oh, so many things have not worked for me. <laughs> and I'm discovering new things every day that oh. don't work for me. Um, I think the biggest thing 
if I had to say like kind of in general is two things really thinking that I could solve everybody's problem with my thing. And the second thing is confusing the sales process with the marketing process. Mm -hmm. Those are the two things for me. Um, I have found that when I serve a very, very, very specific client and can overcome or help them solve a very, very, very specific problem, um, mm -hmm. they're easier to communicate to. I can raise my prices. I can sell with more confidence. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, it generates, it generates more business and it generates recurring business, you know, mm -hmm. uh, one-time sales into long time. So how did you confuse the two? How did you confuse the sales process and the marketing process? Well, sales is different than marketing, right? I mean, a lot of people kind of lump them together, but marketing is getting people ready for the sale. So mm -hmm. marketing is um, calling out, demonstrating to people that you understand their problem and you understand um, what they're up against. And maybe you understand their problem or where they're where how they're approaching their problem better than they do so that you can create some insights or maybe help them shift the way that they're looking about their problem you also maybe understand how they've tried to solve their problem in the past and you also show them that you have a plan you have something that's new and unique and something that maybe they've never tried or never considered before and the marketing all of that stuff can be dealt with and can be spoken to, especially in the age of social media, when people have Facebook groups or they've got email lists or they've got communities, all of that stuff can be sort of brought along before the sales conversation even happens. What I like to do with folks is I like to show them that they can bring their clients or their potential clients, like I said, 80, 85, 90% of the way before the sales conversation even happens so that when you say, hey, I'm enrolling a couple of people in this new program, um, let me know if you, if, you wanna, if you wanna have a conversation about it, then you don't need to do all of that BS before. And all you need to do is talk to people that are a seven or an eight out of 10 on working with you already. They're already pre-sold on most of your stuff, including your price. And then it's just a simple question of finding out if you could truly help them and if the timing is right for them. So what was the mistake that you made? Thinking that I could do it all at once. Okay. Thinking that I had to write like a big, long, like not talk about all of that stuff or not necessarily, or think that I had to like write, you know, like a, a thousand word sales letter in order to take people from attention to interest, to desire, to action, all within the space of one sitting. That's a that's a recipe for like leaving money on the table and for uh, having everybody jump through hoops and you jumping through hoops and overcoming objections and hearing I'll think about it a lot or I'll have to talk with my husband or my wife or my priest or my rabbi, you know, those sorts of things a lot. Whereas if you've got a group of people, and I mean, most people have Facebook groups or, or email lists these days, right? Um, but most people, they think, they still think in the old model that they've got to, they've got to push it all together in one event, the webinar, like run, you know, pay $5 a lead or more to run people through a 90 minute webinar and then throw them onto a call with a high ticket closer with fast action discounts and all this stuff where you're just clamping, 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 clamping down. People by nature don't make decisions that quickly. A lot of them don't. And a lot of them, if they do make decisions that quickly, a high percentage of those people um, will either get buyer's remorse or they won't follow through because they get excited to buy and then they don't follow through. Or they, it turns out that it isn't really what they wanted or they'll refund once they discover that it isn't really what they wanted. I'm saying Trust the process, use your marketing to educate people on what you have to offer, who you can really help 99 out of 100% of the time. Tell them what the price is, tell them exactly you know, who you're looking for, who you are, your strengths, your weaknesses, the fact that you know them and bring them in. And for some people that might take three weeks, for some people that might take three months. 
50% of the people that I work with or more it takes them six months, but that's fine by me because I know that when I'm on, they're going to pay my price. I'm not going to have to overcome objections and they know that I know how to help them. And when I know how to help them, then they will buy again the next time and they will refer their friends. So who exactly is your target? Like how big are they? They are usually solopreneur. Mm -hmm. They are usually working 10 hour days. Um, They're usually 10 hours, anywhere between five and 15 hours a week on sales calls that they really hate. And every sales call feels like a blind date. Um, they are selling, they're usually 10,000 to 20,000 or so. They are not interested in hiring a sales team or in running funnels or running Facebook ads or anything like that because, um, uh, they want to stay small. They want to, they're, they're not interested in private chats. So the big thing for them is they want to make the sales process easy and fun. They don't want to outsource it and they're sick of, having to say no to their daughter's soccer game or to date night with their hubby or whatever, because they're stuck on these big long sales calls with people that aren't ready for them and they're, and therefore they're not ready for the call. So those are the people. But what, what's their revenue? Usually anywhere between 10 and 20 K a month. Okay. So like to 100, start. 120000 to $250,000. Yeah. I mean, the, the, so for me, it's a situation more about where they're at. So if somebody's selling a $2,000 program, uh, but they're spending, you know, and so maybe they're not quite at that 10K a month level, um, but they are, um, but there's, but they're doing way too many sales calls. Chances are, like those people, gen- generally what I do with them is I look and I say, look, your $2,000 offer could be bumped up to a $5,000 offer and we can do it in a three-day workshop as opposed to an eight, eight week long one-on-one program. And you've been talking to this Facebook group that you've had of like 450 people for three months, but you're not making enough offers and you're not making them to the right people. So what I do is I help them put out, you know, a couple of posts to get people's hands raising dial in their offer so that it's really, really specific for a very specific problem. You sometimes raise the price, sometimes not, and then get them to qualify them on chat, send them a Google doc with the offer and then get the, and then collect the decision. So it's less about revenue for me. Although in general, the people that are having the problems that I'm really good at solving are generally somewhere between 10 and 20. They're at capacity for their time, maybe for their revenue and they're just sick of wasting time on these sales calls that are going nowhere. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what um, marketing advice do you have uh, before we you know, close off? Stop making big promises, make smaller, more significant promises that you know that you can help and solve for people 99% of the time. Mm-hmm. Know Great. exactly what they are bringing to the table in order to make your job easier. Mm-hmm. And, and build that trust, build that trust early with that first sale so that you can give, so that you can sell your bigger thing later on down the road. Perfect. Now, where could people reach you, Nathan? Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook, although I use my Facebook mainly for personal stuff. But if you wanted to give me a follow there, you could, or reach out to me there. Mm-hmm. But I'm primarily on LinkedIn. And um, the last name is pretty, pretty easy to, I think I'm only like one or two of me on there. So, so just find me on my last name. All right. Well, you and the kitty. (laughs) Thank you so much to both of you. (laughs) Thanks for being here. Thanks, Chala. Take care. Bye-bye.